Good evening, everybody. It is another lovely afternoon here in West Texas, and we are getting ready to head out and shine some cuts. The last couple of nights have been really good, so I'm hoping that that trend will continue tonight. We're hoping to see some snakes out here. We're going to do a little bit of cruising for lizards and diurnal snakes before it gets dark, and then we're going to go shine cuts. Well, we are once again starting off our night with a cool bug. This is the What's the common name for these? Glorious jewel scarab? I have no idea. Christina Gloriosa. They're a really cool type of beetle that lives out here in West Texas. And I think they range pretty far into New Mexico too. But really beautiful bug. There's two species of jeweled scarab we get here. This is the least attractive in my opinion. The other ones are really, really cool. They have, they're much bigger and they have a solid green body with these really cool metallic blue legs. But these guys will fly into your face while you're shining cuts because they come to your flashlight. So in that manner, they're kind of annoying because they'll scare you, but they're really pretty and obviously completely harmless. I'm just going to leave him to it and we're probably going to start shining here soon. We got a beautiful sunset going out here, but it's time to start walking. So I'm going to strap up the GoPro and get to it. There's another bear to eye. Might even be the same one we found last night. Well, I'm not entirely convinced that isn't the same bear giraffe snake we found on the road in almost the same spot in the last episode. But hey, we're on the board pretty fast tonight. Nice bear giraffe snake here crawling around. I'm just going to leave this guy to it, and we're going to keep shining. I mean, this looks like the same snake we found in the last episode, so I'm assuming it is. I'm just going to let him keep going, and we're going to do the same. Alright guys, well we're getting ready to leave and go to a different area because nothing's out. And there's a blacktail on the road. Apparently Steven just found another blacktail. So there's two blacktails right here back to back after seeing nothing for really since the bear die. But what a good looking snake. Look at this guy. Really, really pretty. Well anyways, really sharp looking blacktail on the road as our next snake of the night. We're going to head to a different area and shine. Hopefully it'll be a little bit more productive, but at least we found a couple things here. Two blacktails, one of which I didn't see, Stephen found, and a nice bear dye that I'm pretty sure was the same bear dye we saw in the last episode. So not too bad, but not great either. So we're going to move on to another area and get this guy to the road. Stay out of the road, brother. You are too handsome to be run over. Well, we just had a weird little road cruise. We passed the snake we thought was dead and came back to it, and it's our first snoring gopher of the year. Not the most colorful one, but kind of interesting. He's really dark for this area. Maybe about a year old. These guys are absolutely everywhere sometimes. It's actually right here next to a rock cut. Yeah, nice snoring gopher snake is our next snake of the night. First one of these we've seen this year, and I'm sure it won't be the last. Hopefully we'll be able to find some nice big adults out here because they're always fun. But it really seems like most of the ones we see are these tiny ones like this guy. Really nice reddish coloration there on the back. And it fades into a kind of darker, kind of brownish. But pretty good looking snake. Nice little snoring gopher, our first one of the season. So we're just going to make sure this guy gets well off the road and keep making our way to the next cut we're going to shine. Gopher snake on a rock cut. It's not something you see very often, but this is the direction he was heading, so we're just going to let him do his thing. Alright, stay out of the road, dude. We'll keep moving. Alright, well there's our next snake of the night, a nice little copperhead. It kind of looks similar to the one we found the other night. Might be the same one. I'm going to compare markings here in a second and check, but nice copperhead stretched out right here. Our next snake of the night. Well, I just compared markings, and this is in fact the copperhead we've seen before. I don't think you guys will have seen it yet, but 
Me and Steven have found this snake already, and he will appear in a later video, so we're not going to mess with him too much, but really cool. First copperhead of the night. Always love seeing these guys, and hopefully we'll see some more, but just going to leave this guy to it, though. Next snake of the night, a nice Trans-Pecos copperhead here in C2 on the crawl. So I don't know how well y'all are going to be able to see this, but there's actually two blacktails right there. That thing on the right is one coiled up, and then that thing on the left is one on the crawl. I don't think there's any way to get up there to get a better look at them. So you're just going to have to take my word for it. But two blacktails right there just hanging out with each other. I wish they were in a better spot to get a better look at them because that is actually really cool to see. Just two rattlesnakes being bros up there. All right, guys, well, this is closing in on 4 a.m. at this point, and it has been a little bit slow. We haven't seen anything since the two blacktails. And really, overall activity tonight has been a lot lower than it has been the previous couple of nights that it wasn't soaking wet, at least. But we're going to hit this cut and then probably end up wrapping up the night if we don't see anything here. So if we see something, I will definitely let you guys know. But if not, I might see you guys in the morning. All right, we are out here the next night. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> Last night was a little bit weird. I don't know why there wasn't much activity. Maybe we just got unlucky. It seemed like it was perfect weather, so we're going to try this again tonight in a different area, and hopefully it goes a little bit better. But I'll have the GoPro running at least until I run out of batteries, so hopefully we'll find some snakes. I just wanted to talk about something that I've been thinking about a lot lately while out here walking around alone in the desert. Um, I do have Steven out here with me as usual, but he is probably multiple miles away at most times because we pick stretches of habitat and either I walk and he cruises or we both walk, but we crisscross so we don't see each other for often maybe up to 45 minutes at a time. And the reason I mention that is because there are mountain lions out here and it's something that I think about a lot and sometimes I get into my head and I start to worry about it and kind of freak out a little bit but the reality of the situation is just like snakes mountain lions are very misunderstood and for me to actually see one while shining a cut especially with my gopro running would be almost an unheard of thing to have happen especially if it was close enough that you could actually see it on the gopro and it wasn't a fleeting glimpse and the more i think about it the more i think about how cool that would be to just look up and there's a mountain lion but I also think that would be the most terrifying thing you could experience while out here. But something about it to me is just completely fascinating. And now I've kind of went over the course of the last couple of days, I've gone from being, you know, worried about mountain lions to being fascinated by them. And I was never, you know, scared of them or anything beyond, you know, what I think is a healthy uh, respect, just like anyone should have for any potentially dangerous wildlife. But I just, I think it would be so awesome if I could just find one and, and look up one day and there it is. Especially if that was something that I could share with you guys and I caught it on camera. That would be awesome. But it's just something to think about, something to consider that this time I spend out here looking for these elusive snakes. I could also potentially run across something that's just as elusive, if not more elusive. Because I've seen a whole lot of gray banded king snakes in my time out here and never a single mountain lion. Well, like I said, it was just something that crossed my mind and I figured it would be cool to mention that at any point while I'm recording, I could run across one of these awesome animals and hopefully get it on camera so you guys can see it too. But it is definitely a little bit unnerving knowing that there's something out here that could at any moment really pounce on me and kill me if it wanted to. But there's just something so fascinating about that and something so awe-inspiring that west texas is still wild enough that there's an animal out here that's higher up on the food chain than i am but i'm sure you all know mountain lion attacks are very rare especially here in west texas it's almost unheard of but man i can't stop thinking about how cool it would be to just see one so with that in mind i'm gonna get to shining and if i see any snakes or otherwise i will let you guys know all right guys well steven found our first snake of the night this is a baby cuculata Definitely the smallest one I have ever seen and probably one of the most obscure finds one could have in West Texas. Next to nothing is known about these snakes, especially the juveniles and their reproductive cycle. 
In fact, I think we might be some of the only people who have ever documented clutch size from this species, but really, really cool. First find of the night, a baby Transpecos black-headed snake. Not something I would have ever expected to see out here tonight. And the crazy thing about this is this thing is the size of an adult tantilla of basically every other species. We're just gonna get some quick photos of this little man and let him on his way. Well, that is really cool. Roughly, uh, maybe, maybe a fifth of the size of the ones we've seen so far this year. Yeah. That is really, really cool. Look at that little black head. It's just a minute. Oh, there's moths flying everywhere, flying into my face. All right, guys, Steven strikes again with a nice black neck garter snake. This is a species we hadn't seen yet this season. We saw a checkered garter the other night, but these are actually a different species entirely. They can look fairly similar, but this one doesn't look anything like a checkered garter. They often have a lot more colorful necks, and you can see they've got that beautiful slate gray kind of bluish head. Really, really handsome snakes a lot of the times, but they are pretty variable. Sometimes you'll get some uglier ones. A lot of the garter snakes out here in West Texas will actually venture quite far from water, but, uh, we do see these guys in, in this general area fairly often, especially if you can find some water and shine around it. But really, really handsome garter snake. Love that blue head and that vibrant stripe clean pattern. Just a great looking snake all around. One thing I will say about these guys is they have some of the most foul musk you will ever smell. He musked me when I was holding him just then and it was not pleasant at all. So that being said, I'm gonna take some quick photos and then we'll let this guy go. Really cool looking neck snake of the night the uh, Western Black Neck Garter. All right, guys. Well, this little worm-like creature is our next snake of the night. This is a blind snake. I'll have to key out what species it is later because there's three of them that we could potentially find here in West Texas. And uh, the only way to tell them apart is scalation on the head. So it's hard to ID these guys at a glance. I'll have to take a close-up photo and then check later. But super weird alien-looking little snakes. Even for a blind snake, this one's pretty tiny. And even on the big ones, it's pretty hard to see any sort of features on them with the naked eye because they're just so small. But you can see the scales right there. Definitely a snake, not a worm. But really neat little group of snakes. Something that I don't get to see back home because we don't have them on the East Coast. But really interesting little snakes nonetheless. I love to see them out here. So I'm just gonna let this guy continue burying in the gravel right here and we're gonna keep on shining. You can see the tail on these guys is more of a little stub than it is on most snakes. Nice little blind snake is our next find. All right guys, 12.30 update. There's a giant black witch moth right there. And uh, I still haven't actually found a snake. Steven found all three of the snakes we found at the last spot we went to. So if you're wondering what kind of night I'm having, that should tell you. But we're gonna keep at it as usual. We'll probably go until about three or 4 a.m. So plenty of time to make up for that. Hey, here's a snake. A baby cuculata. No, it's a Hobart Smith eye. <laughs> I finally did it. I did it, I found a snake. This is actually another species we haven't seen yet this year. This is Tantilla Hobart Smithi, probably the most common Tantilla on years where Cuculata aren't, apparently. But you can tell these guys apart because they're so much smaller. This is an adult. Whoa! Well, he kept sliding down the cut and he just didn't stop until he hit a clump of grass and disappeared. So that was Tantilla Hobart Smithi, everyone. The Smith's black-headed snake. Hopefully we'll see some more. They are quite common here. Normally they're the most common Tantilla, so. I can't imagine we will have a hard time finding another one at some point. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, it's looking like we aren't gonna see any more snakes tonight. So here is a very tiny little pocket mouse. Very cute, good old turn of food. <laughs> but I haven't seen anything aside from that one Tantilla and then Steven found the other snakes I showed you guys, but it has been a pretty slow one overall, so. Probably gonna have to continue this tomorrow. Hopefully it'll be a little bit more productive. This thing is very cute. He's got big cheeks, look at that. But we'll leave him alone. Probably gonna wrap this up tonight and uh, I will see you guys in the morning.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, we are going to try this one more time. We went out last night. It's not going to end up in this episode because it was so bad. We saw one snake, and it was a checkered garter that actually flipped under a rock. We didn't even see any snakes out in the open. So Steven's making his way down there. We're going to start shining here shortly, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to wrap up this video tonight. Look at this guy's long stinger. All right, guys, here's our first find of the night. This is the ubiquitous crevice spiny lizard. These are probably one of the most common herps in West Texas, but the reason I haven't shown you one yet is because they wedge themselves in cracks and are almost impossible to get out unless they choose a really stupid crack like this one did, and then it's pretty easy. Really cool, big scoloporous species. Probably, like I said, one of the more common herps out here and a staple food item for a lot of the snakes we like to look for, like gray banded king snakes and rock rattlesnakes. So much bigger than any of the uh, scoloporous that we see out on the east coast. So, And sometimes they can be pretty stunningly colored too. You get some really nice orange ones in this area every once in a while. I'm just gonna put this guy back and we're gonna get back to shining. And that's how you find them right there. All right, we finally have a snake. Right there is a nice mottled rock rattlesnake coiled in ambush. Really cool. Not the best looking one, but also not terrible. And this is an interesting place to see one. We don't see too many in this area. Well, this girl decided she did not want to sit after about three seconds of us looking at her as they do. But it's a snake after a couple of really slow nights. That is more than welcome. She's crawling through the grass. It's got a kind of cool purplish tint to her. But otherwise, not a terribly remarkable looking rock rattlesnake. But I am... I'm more than happy to see this thing after the last two nights where we have seen exactly one checkered garter snake each up until this point. Hello. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get some quick photos of this girl and we will leave her to her business. Thing's got a really cool looking purplish hue on its head. Really nice. And like I said before, I spend a lot of time in this area and don't see too many lepidus. This is probably only my fourth or fifth ever. So not a bad find at all. The weird part about tonight is we started off in an area that normally has tons of lepidus and then came out here to an area where we don't see too many lepidus and found a lepidus. It has definitely been a weird couple of weeks out here in West Texas and this week has probably been the weirdest because there's not really anything wrong with the weather but it just doesn't seem like the snakes are out in the numbers they usually are. Which is frustrating but that's how herping goes sometimes so I'm going to photograph this girl real quick and we will put her back. All right, guys, well, here is a sleeping little baby crevice spiny lizard. This is probably gonna end up being our last find of the night. It's getting pretty late and we haven't seen anything since the rock rattlesnake. But an interesting thing about these guys is they actually give live birth, so their babies are absolutely everywhere, way before all the other hurt babies are. It's probably gonna be the last thing we see tonight. Hopefully the shift in the weather coming next week will bring more productive herping. So probably gonna wrap this one up here. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time.